Hi, it's Lorna, and today I'm gonna show you how to make a gift box. Um, the gift box that I am going to be making today has a little Hanukkah theme with the Star of David and some gold marker, so you can really see how that you can design your own custom papers and make it for birthdays, holidays, anything that you want or just to give a gift just to say thank you or well wishes you can write on the paper ahead of time and then make it into a gift box no wrapping needed so this is the top half of our gift box and we're going to make the bottom half of our gift box making the top and the bottom are the exact same thing so um, you only need to follow the instructions once per side so I'm gonna set that to the side. Things you're gonna need is you're gonna need a piece of paper. This is just an eight by 10 piece of cardstock. If you wanna make a larger box, you need larger paper. If you wanna make a smaller box, you could even make one of the quarter of this size paper. You just need it to be um, a rectangle would be good, but you could also make a square. Or you could make a triangle using the same method. So I have a pencil, a glue stick, big fan of the purple glue here. This tends to work the best because you're gonna be putting a lot of pressure on the inside of these corners here and having a nice sturdy glue is really important. You can also substitute this for some PVA, like wet glue, like white glue or clear glue would be fine, hot glue would be fine. Um, Mod Podge would be fine for this as well, but you just wanna glue that bonds really well with paper. Hot glue would be okay, um, but it might be a little bit bulky. So keep that in mind. Wet glue would also maybe warp your paper. Same with Mod Podge, it may make some wrinkles in it. So keep that in mind. You could also use tape. Um, I recommend scotch tape or even duct tape, but not washi tape because this is structural. So you could put a little piece of washi tape on it after you've glued it for a little added reinforcement, but you don't wanna just use washi tape because it will not hold up very well. So I recommend this glue right here, the purple one. You can see where it goes and holds really good. Okay, so the first thing, oh, we also need a ruler. It was off to the side, so I forgot to include it, but we need a ruler. Um, if you don't have a ruler, you can eyeball this. It's just not going to be as precise or perfect. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ruler, or you could use a straight edge, either way. I'm not actually measuring, so you could just use a straight edge. I'm just going to use the edge of my ruler, lining up the bottom with the bottom of my paper, and then I'm gonna take my pencil, and I'm going to mark. I'm just using the width of my ruler, which is about an inch. So if you wanted to measure, you could do about an inch. Um, if you want your sides to be smaller, so these are my sides. You can see that it is the width of a ruler. If you wanted them to be even smaller, just make this measurement smaller. If you want your sides to be really, really deep, you can make it even deeper by, you could double your ruler or you can measure out two inches, three inches, but that will make the length of your box smaller. So if you go two inches in, the top of your box would only be about two inches by two inches, but the sides would be deeper. So for this, I'm just going to do the length of a ruler. I am going to score my folds to make it a little bit easier on me. This is optional, you do not need to do it. I'm just using a clay tool. You could use the back of an X-Acto blade. You could use the back of your scissors to score it. Um, you could use a pen and just go over it two times and that will also be sufficient. I'm not using a pen right now because I don't want to get black ink on my table. So I'm just, running this edge. I used to use in college a nail because I found that that was a nice sharp um, tool that would score my paper without cutting all the way through it. Scoring just anything just makes it a little bit easier 
to fold. It's not necessary, but definitely is helpful. So if you were doing something that's patterned, like my box lid here, you want to make sure that your pattern is on the back side of this. So this is this is the back. If I had some beautiful artwork, I would want it on the, the back side. So I'm working on, sorry, the, this would be the front. This is the back. Because we don't want any of our pencil lines to show. I'm gonna go ahead and score that. And I'm not cutting through, I'm scoring, which means I'm only making a little line across. It's, just scratching the surface. Line up my ruler and I'm doing this for all four sides. Fun fact, I think I have made over a thousand of these boxes in my lifetime and that is not an overestimation. When I worked for preschool and I taught preschool I would make these for holidays for all the kids gifts to go in and I would make them for multiple teachers which would be about 200 a year and then I'd also make them in my personal life okay so now that we have our lines all drawn so again I just went around with the ruler on all the sides drew our line scored it so now I need to fold these lines in. So I'm just gonna take my paper and I'm going to fold it. And then you can see it goes really easy because I do have that score. If you don't have that score, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna kinda line up and then fold. It may even be easier to fold reverse and then forward. That way you can see the line. But um, I scored so I can just easily fold forward and you want to make sure all your lines are nice and crisp so you can use your fingernail and go along the edge you can use the back of a pair of scissors and go over the edge whatever tool works for you a bone folder is actually meant for that but I don't have a bone folder because I find that I always just have something else that's easier to grab I did a lot of these, I might use a bone folder. When I did them for preschool, I didn't even measure. That's how many I made. I just, I could eyeball how far to fold them all at that point. So now what we're gonna do, that all of our sides are folded. I've unfolded them all. So now we're going to cut. So we're gonna take our scissors and we're just going to cut these lines on the long. So we're not gonna cut the whole corner out. We're only going to cut just to the line here. So we're just gonna cut one, and then on the other side. It doesn't matter which direction you cut. So if you wanted, you could cut these ones but not these ones. You're only cutting one line of these squares. You're not cutting the squares off. And you wanna be precise and cut all the way down and this is gonna give you nice crisp corners. If you don't follow your line very well or you kinda stop a little too short, um, your corners are gonna be a little bit off. So now comes the glue. I'm gonna grab a piece of paper so I can protect my table. So when I'm gluing, I always glue on a little piece of paper just to make sure that um, one, my work surface is clean. That and if I get any glue here, I can move to another piece of paper so that I'm not transferring glue all over my project. It's good to work clean when you have glue. So I'm just putting glue on those little tabs. So I folded them inward and put the glue. Now you're just gonna push forward and you're gonna line up your edges. Make sure you line up your corner and then press firm. Do that for both sides. 
line up your corner, press firm. And what I like to do is I like to tip it on its side and push in the center and really burnish that glue in because remember, these pieces are gonna have some pressure from whatever you have inside. If you put a t-shirt in here, if you put cards, it's gonna have some weight in there. So you really wanna make sure that your glue is holding. So now you're gonna do that for the same side. You're gonna flip your little tab in, flip your little tab in, and you're gonna put glue. And I really like this purple glue because you can see where it's gone on so you know if you've missed any corners. You know if it's already dried up on you because when it dries, it dries clear. So I'm going to line up my corners. And I like to do that on both sides and then burnish just to make sure that my glue isn't drying on one side. You could do them one at a time, but I find it makes it a little bit difficult because then you're trying to put glue on this while it's turned in. And the last side. So the last tip I have for you is to let these dry before assembling because the last thing you wanna do is spend all this time making a box and then accidentally glue the lid to the base. So I let it dry for a few minutes and then I will put my, my things in and my lid on. And these boxes are exactly the same size, so they will fit snug. I like that. You could make your bottom just slightly smaller by going, instead of doing the width of the ruler, which is about an inch, just go a little bit wider and do like an inch and like a centimeter or so, and that'll make it just smaller than the lid if you want to do that. Um, I choose to just have them the same size and then press them together. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you give this a try. If you do like it, please like and subscribe. And if you make one of these, we'd love to see it at our Instagram at W-O-A underscore mixed. So I hope you have a happy holiday and that you make these to give some wonderful gifts. Thanks for watching. Bye.